gonna swap oh into this in-game overlay here. Here we go. I'm gonna change up these uh these overlays here. Hopefully nothing crashes and dies. Uh and it's going to be Gale Force Esports versus Hot Dog. There we go. Easy peasy. So we're gonna be hopping into this game on Infernal Shrines. It's going to be Gale Force Esports versus the Hot Dog Burglars. I realized that I found the stream key from last week. So oh, awesome. between next game, we can switch everything out. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I I don't think it's actually on my side. Uh, judging by what I'm seeing in chat and on Twitter, uh, it's possibly a server side issue. So I have switched out the server now. So hopefully everything's going to be a okay. Uh, I don't actually think it was any issue on my end because from what I can tell, things seem to be running all right. So fingers crossed that we can keep running this here. Uh, but we do have a backup now, fully secured, should we need it. And the game is about to begin. Infernal Shrines, man, looking a little bit different. I missed a lot of that draft, but it looks like we have another Tassadar countering Zeratul. Was Tassadar picked after? He was. There was second pick, Zeratul, and an instant response pickup on that Tassadar. Uh, I, I, you know, that's what's kind of one of the problems when you first pick a zero tool that early, you allow yourself to get into it. But anyway, we're going to be interested in these teams on the left-hand side. It's going to be Gale Force Esport. Equinox is going to be playing that Vala. We're going to have Fury on ETC, ALMAO playing that task star, Mysticles on Jaina, and Brightwing being played by Hexo. The Hot Dog bur Burglars, HDB, Mad Timmy on Karazim, Zeus on Faustad, Yoda once again on zero tool, Trader on Kael'thas, and Boss Floss on Johanna. So Kael Thas uh, making a return tonight. Yeah, and Fury and Equinox. Previously of Resurgence, we saw Resurgence. The, the news went live a few days ago that the team was no more. But here we are. We know they've now found a home with Gale Force Esports. So let's see how their debut match goes. I remember Fury played once with them before. And it was a pretty disgusting game. His stitches is absolutely monstrous. So we're going to start this game and see how this new roster does. Yeah, you know, Fury is one of those heroes or players that's widely regarded as one of the best warriors in the game. Yoda coming on that back line, getting some poke in, hitting ILMAO, and he's going to dive back out of there. So an early contest there in that middle lane. Both teams are going to split. And no surprise in that top lane as we take a look at the bottom lane. But in that top lane, Falstad versus uh, Boss Floss taking a bit of damage oh, here. Yeah. Boss Floss. But the turn, uh, Equinox actually taking a bit of a turn. Yeah, but in that top lane, Brightwing versus Faustad, both being able to get out of there at a one fly, one shift. Uh, but Zeratul could be looking to rotate up and get a gank there. But both teams here, no surprise here. That you know, I, I was kind of curious if they were going to rotate here. Two Conjurers Pursuit on the side uh, of uh, who do we, Gale Force Esports. Sorry, I'm trying to get reacclimated here as I missed the whole preparation phase. Oh, no uh, worries. Uh, Tassadar and Jaina. I'm not sure if they'll rotate or not. Both of them are still down here. But um, we have a little bit of a pause. I haven't seen anything come up in chat yet. Yep. Um, uh, some confusion coming out from uh, Hot Dog mark. Burglars. Yes. Uh, there was... I'm not even sure there was a pause, please, requested. There was not. Oh, his headset died. Uh, so normally the, the etiquette that is done is, is PP. Pause, please. And then you usually instant pause anyway. But it's generally polite to ask... Uh, I was actually, it was interesting that you, the second you were mentioning those Conjure Pursuit, I was happy to key over them noticing it, so I would expect that Tassadar and jo, uh, Jaina are going to rotate here, they're going to want to collect these globes, uh, and uh, as it sits currently, uh, I really like the idea of pairing Hexo up against Zeus in this top lane, um, kind of being able to combat that global presence somewhat, so, uh, it, it really interesting here, and Hexo actually... Brightwing's a fairly strong solo laner, especially with the changes that have been made to her kit, so... Uh, but here we go, Yoda's coming in hard, Hexo popping that Pixie Dust, and the Poly's gonna go down. Is it gonna be enough, though? I'm not sure, and one more... Oh, yes, he barely is gonna go down there. Yoda taking quite a bit of damage, though. I feel like if he'd potentially polyed Yoda there instead of Zeus, he might have been in a little better position, but Equinox going in for the blind Q, trying to secure that kill, but Mad Timmy also taking a bit of damage down here in the bot lane. Yoda is no stranger to those tower shots because uh, he dove in a couple times last game, got caught out, and uh, you can see being very aggressive there. And we are seeing a bit of a rotation down here to this middle lane, trying to take advantage of those globes and the wave clear going on there. But the rotation back there, the stun coming down, Boss Floss with that iron skin, he's going to get out of there okay, but not before taking a few shots, saying, hey, not just yet, as we are preparing now for our first shrine here in about 10 seconds. Yes, indeed. So... 
Oh, wow, this uh, these first few fights have been pretty even going back and forth. Only one kill going the way of Hot Dog Burglars. But potentially a second up here in the top lane. Hexo almost going down once again. Yoda has been very aggressive in these rotations. I really like the decision making. So the temple, the first shrine is going to spawn. Boss loss once again. Caught out in the mid lane. He's still got that iron skin trait though. And I think he's going to be able to walk out no problem though. So a lot of aggression to start this game coming from both these teams. Yeah, I think level four was trying to be hit there by both teams as we do see Yoda in that top lane trying to take down Hexo. That's a back and forth, but the action is down here at the shrine as both teams are now at level four. It ended up, look, Brightwing did go down up there, so getting the best of that 1v1 was Zeratul there. Yeah, I actually missed it. I was so focused down here in the bot lane. Uh, the fight has been going on. So right now it's a 4v4, but Fury's going in, trying to catch out Zeus, taking a lot of damage to Taster Shields. Sorry, the shield coming out from uh, Karazim, enough to keep him alive, though, so great job coming out from him. Uh, Fury doing a fantastic job zoning. We were talking about him being one of those tank players that you absolutely watch for, and he's showing us why in this game. His, his positioning has been absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely trusting his team here, uh, despite the fact that they only have the one support in AOMAO, and they're going to be able to secure the first John Cena of the game. Now, taking a look at the talents for HDB, Kael'thas... Gathering power. Will we yeah. get anything out of that? Will we see a pyroblast tonight? Who knows? Either way, gathering power, you gotta secure those kills. And so far, you know, just a few in the game. And then also at level one, the updraft, the increased barrel roll there. That's gonna be huge for uh, the potential ganks or dive composition there involving Faust. That I mean, you take a look at both of these teams. Could it be a disengage or an engagement tool? We're gonna find out as he did go level four power through, which I imagine will be seen. Secret weapon, follow that up at level seven as well absolutely if you wouldn't mind i i did end closing my stream uh just to save on some processing if you could keep it open and let me know just make sure everything's still going well for us that would be fantastic uh but yes the, the the pyroblast that's the big question looking at this we've got dimensional shift we've got two ice blocks coming out from the side uh of gale force esports which really only leaves the vala uh, as a really juicy target for that pyroblast but it's still definitely an option uh coming out from kale Thos, but I mean, it's going to be curious to see because Phoenix just, you know, didn't really, re you know, received a pretty hefty nerf in its cooldown there. So that, I feel like, is going to be the big uh, ultimate question, the choice, you know, what is he going to go with? That's going to be the big question for this game. The other uh, fun part about their builds is Zeratul going with Season Marksman. No Regeneration Master coming out this time. No surprise, though. Fission Bomb at level 7 for Kael'thas. That'll couple very well at level 13 with that Chain Bomb to help spread that. But a cleanse is going to be coming out from Karazim. And, of course, with that Mosh Pit available, obviously it's one of those things you got to be careful of with several things going on the power slide there. But we are seeing a rotation towards the bottom, cleaning up that camp that was just grabbed. HDB being very aggressive with their rotations right now. Will they try and grab another one because the next shrine phase uh not too far away yeah absolutely you know monk has to give up a lot to get that cleanse but i i think it was kind of necessary here uh and you know against this team echo of heaven such an absolutely fantastic talent gives him so much more bul just bulk healing but and then you know that sustain is going to mean a lot on these shrines but i think cleanse was kind of necessary the next shrine is spawning in the top lane the xp is dead even uh, the push has been pretty much identical. Both these teams asserted some Merc pressure, but did a very good job uh, of counteracting it. Both these teams uh, are making some great decision-making going into this game. I feel like this is going to be an absolute back-and-forth sport, back and forth slugfest. This is going to be a, a brawl from these teams. Yeah, we see Brightwing shifting in, and one curious thing I want to cover on those talents here in a second, as we now see it right there, that's the Peekaboo. So Peekaboo was picked up at level 4 when you already have a Tassadar who's specced into Mental Acuity. So they are going very heavy on Vision. They don't want to deal with an invisible Zeratul at all as the Oracle comes out once again and sneaks out Zeratul, who's not going to be getting on that back lane. And they're using that to try and force the fight. But right now, the Guardians are being taken down by HDB as the engagement now starts to come in. Zeus, obviously, with that increased barrel range, Yoda taking damage. HDB being forced back here. Yeah, no, they kind of split. Zeus was really heavily caught out in the top lane. Yoda in the bot lane being forced out by Jaina. So... The team a little bit spread there. I think they're going to have to consolidate a little bit there. There's the peekaboo coming out once again. Right wing Hexo, a fantastic support player, has been using this uh, phase shift on cooldown. Yoda, he's coming in though. He's actually going to miss his gravity spike there. And is he going to go down? Yes, he is. There we go. Boss loss is hard engaging there as well. He's going to pop his iron skin. Is he going to be able to get it here? No. Fury, I think, is going to be able to lock him down. Absolutely fantastic job. Just the sustain coming out between Bright wing and Tassadar. Maybe just a little bit too much to handle here uh, for the side of Hot Dog Burglars. Yeah, that was a great engagement. Again, that vision is paying dividends. We saw 
Zeratul diving on that back line. He did go with Vorpal Blade, so that does allow him to get in and out, but he wasn't able to get out of there in time. He took a bunch of damage. They're really prioritizing keeping vision and keeping that back line as level seven frost armor being picked up for Jaina as well. So sustain is the name of the game. If you can keep Jaina and Vela alive, you know you're gonna get the damage as they get the front gate down and that's huge there, but they aren't able to get a fort this early in the game. So not a huge loss there for HDB. Yeah, Equinox pulled off a very optimistic strafe um, as, the, uh, as the Punisher jumped in there. Uh, kind of hoping to catch her. Kael'thas was almost successful, but not uh, quite able to do so. So camps are going to come out now for both these teams. Level 10 secured for both. Uh, obviously, Trader looking for that level 13 talent. He will get that Chain Bomb. That's How the main... Go ahead. Pardon? Oh, but as a... So that's going to be a, a bit of a big deal here for them. So I'm going to be curious to see how these fights start to change when that level 13 talent comes out here. I feel like that's going to be a big factor for them. But, you know, as this goes on, Brightwing is going to be able to do quite a lot more. And that, I feel like that Polymorph is going to be a big deal in these fights. It is going to be a big deal, especially when you think about the amount of control and vision that they have. And then Karazim going seven-sided strike as opposed to that Divine Palm for somebody like a Diving Zeratul, who's been very aggressive. It could be the difference between a win and a loss of one hero, and therefore ultimately an entire fight. As we do see a little bit of a rotation here, four members down here, but being sniffed out once again, ILMAO is getting the brunt of the attack, but no flank available for Yoda, who's he's staying on there, but shifting out. But the damage came down on Brightwing. That appeared to be... An easy kill there. Yeah, I was actually so focused on the battle back and forth with Tastar and Brightwing that I, sorry, Tastar and Zeratul that I missed the kill there uh, on the Brightwing, but it looks like they just realized, you know, they had all the pressures, pressure in the world here. Boss loss, I imagine, just went in engaged hard, uh, and Hexo not able to get out on the back of this. But VP actually had to be blown in the mid, mid lane. Yoda forced to blow that to get out. And Zeus is coming in. Equinox, he's looking for to get the kill here. Equinox is going to vault out as well, but so no, no skill kill secured here but fury he's keeping in and the gust pushing them back zeus is running for dear life is it gonna be enough i don't think it is one two oh he didn't go down so close coming in equinox not able to secure that kill so zeus actually able to get out hexo came in but it wasn't enough to secure the he, kill he had 27 health i clicked to make sure and i wanted oh mm, now he goes nope there. Had, had 27 health <laughs> Equinox rotating up saying, hey, I got a feeling that you're probably either going to be back or fly out of here the minute you get to safety. Let me come check and see if you're actually there and poked right into there and took it down. So a nice rotation. That is why Equinox is a pro. Normal people let that go, but Equinox says, hey, I've been in that situation. I've played this game many, many hours. I know what's going on. And Kael'thas goes down. Man, the chases are on here. I know. I have missed my, you know, I'm the worst observer here. These kills are coming out of nowhere. I'm, I'm watching the minimap as best I can here, but sometimes they're coming out of coming out of the blue. The game sense coming out there from Equinox to know this is likely where he's going to back. They had some creep vision, so they knew where he was. Uh, and just making that heads up play, and you're right, that's what separates the pros from the amateurs here. And Equinox, he's been in the scene for a long time, and I believe that's three for three Punishers going the way of Gale Force Esports. And it does look like they're going to be able to rotate this down to at least get their first fort. This late in the game, this should be pretty much a guaranteed fort. And we do see Boss Bloss. Will it be able to pull it away from the fort? That's the big thing is the rest of the team comes down here. It's starting to do some damage on the fort. And now the damage is starting to come out. Kael'thas trying to get out there. But Strafe already being proc there. But the disengage from Mighty Gust neutralizing that Strafe there. Yeah, absolutely. Zeus said, nope, we're not having any of that. You know, Mighty Gust them out, the Strafe not getting any value there, and, and you know, little stuff, the heads up plays like this, Mystically starting that bottom camp before the Punisher was taken, excuse me, so they were able to finish it up after it was already done, it's little things like that, and just min-maxing, getting as much value as you possibly can out of the map that really separates these high-end amateur team, and Yoda being really aggressive, and Mystically is going to call him out on his bluff, they're forcing Yoda back, so Brightwing, I love this positioning though, we've now got an almost two level lead coming out from the side of Gale Force Esports, uh, really utilizing this global pressure. Zeus has been sort of forced to play a little bit more safe. Um, he's been caught out a few times before, but here we go. Here comes the fight. They want to engage before they're 16. Johanna's going with the force wall. Going to catch her. The blush shield's coming in. There's the Phoenix on the back of it. Uh, going to force them out. I think they're just going to disengage on this. Oh, seven-sided strife's going to completely whiff. I really love this decision making for Gale Force Esports. Yeah, the force wall was perfectly timed. It basically singled out Johanna, who had to use her iron skin, and after that was pretty much forced to try and wait for the team and hold and basically stay tight. 
And uh, either way, that's a shout out. It's the only one I'm doing tonight. Either way, yeah. Zeus down here with that extended barrel roll. Haven't used that mighty gust for another disengage. So far, no real engagement tactics from the mighty gust. They've all been disengaged, which is not a bad thing because it's on a fairly short cooldown. But obviously, if you can get some type of offensive value out of it, that is where it's at. But well on their way to 16 right now. And uh, things are looking really good before this next shrine phase because they're going to be up a talent level. And that's going to be coming up very soon. Yeah, you know, hot dog burglars tried to win, but here we go. Level 16 is reached. They are going to be engaging here. They know they've got that talent here. They're going to be looking to steal these bots and engage. There's with the bless shield coming in as well, but Fury, is, we're going to see the mosh pit here. And no, just going to secure the kill on Johanna. They don't need it. Trader in the back line, though, trying to get some damage off, but it's not going to quite be enough. But here we go. Seven Side Destroy coming in on Fury. Here's the chain bomb. How much value is it going to get here? Yoda's hopping in, but they really, really want this bruiser camp. <laughs> They are contesting it until they couldn't contest it anymore. Johanna went down, and man, Zeratul has to be frustrated now. The vision that's coming out between Peekaboo and the Oracle has basically neutralized a ton of what Zeratul does. Taking a look at the damage, he's done a mere 12,000 hero damage. Whoa. Barely more than ETC. So a complete neutralization between those two talents. I wondered if it was overkill, and so far, it has not been. They have basically kept him at range and said, not this game. So I like the pickup so far, and if they can continue to roll this, as you can see, level 16, they're going to pick up an uncontested uh, g uh, Punisher here, which is going to be huge. And uh, this is going to be four for four now. Yeah, no, Gale Force Esports is doing a very good job. Their decision making has been absolutely on point. As I was trying to say before, Hot Dog Burglars attempted to engage uh, before they were 16, but Gale Force Esports says, nah, we're good. We don't need to fight here. Uh, they backed up, got 16, and now they're sitting very commanding, uh, both structurally in terms of uh, kills uh, and in terms of these punishers. So uh, they're pushing in here, John Cena, and just marching into this top lane. I would expect them to try and pressure keep here. All the ults are up. We've yet to see a big Mosh Pit Ring of Frost combo. I'm not even sure we've seen a Ring of Frost yet this game. Uh, so I'm going to be curious to see those finally come out. Gale Force Esports has been winning this without even using their ultimates. So like that's been saying a lot for these fights. That is, and they are doing a ton of damage. This Punisher is being very well neutralized by that of HDB. So they're going to go ahead and take the brunt of that damage on the front line. The keep barely took any there. So they were did a, a nice defense there, but rotating over for this middle fort. And this late in the game, they have enough damage if they want to try and take this down. They're being very aggressive, but do have to be careful. Zeus flying in that back line. We are about to see the Mighty Gust push back. Equinox being rotated on with Mysticles. And there's a seven-sided strike goes down. In comes the Ring of Frost. Hexo is trying to get out of there and goes down. So a nice gust getting value. Mysticles goes down. So a three for nothing exchange. That was the aggressive mighty gust we were looking for. They got it on even talent levels. Capitalize on it. And they are right back in this game. Looking for a camp and looking for their first four here. Absolutely. That was an absolutely monstrous play coming out from Zeus. He saw a moment of weakness, a little bit of overextension, and he went for the throat. That gust was absolutely massive, hitting exactly who it needed to, catching out Vala and Jaina. Notice he, when he went in, he barrel rode. He got just a little bit better position. He didn't want to just instantly throw it out, and he got so much value for it. Jaina tried to throw down that Ring of Frost, but it didn't end up getting any value. She ice blocked, and she lived. However, at the end of the day, it left herself out pretty much to dry there. There was really nothing her team could do. Ended up taking Brightwing with them in that fight as well. Uh, as they, uh, Hexo was TPing in on top of Mysticles there, so or Equinox, one or the other. So, absolutely great job from Zeus. That Gust single-handedly got his team back in the game. Great play coming up from them. Taking a look, check out the Kael Thos build at 13 and 16. Something I didn't necessarily uh -huh. expect with that Fission Bomb. We are seeing the Flamethrower with the Fury of the Sunwell. So a little bit different build coming out from Trader. You know, they did get a few kills that last one. Getting those GP stacks will definitely help, but how much it pays off is going to be interesting. That's only three stacks right now for gathering power. They are going to go ahead and rotate and try and clear this top lane to neutralize this camp that's going to be pushing. Shrine coming up here in about 10 seconds. They want to get this out of the way so it doesn't push onto that exposed keep and then they can try and defend here. And there's the peekaboo once again getting vision and the polymorph going on. Boss Floss, the nice force wall there. Can they take him down? Just able to survive there in room. Yes, and Equinox, though he's caught out outside of the Void Prism. Is he going to go down? Yes, he is, and the Seven Started Strikes coming down on top of Fury, but the Gust actually just going to knock them out of there. Boss Loss barely kept alive, but here go the Blessed Shields coming, the Ring of Frost as well, only connect on one to Hexo. Is he going to survive? Yes, he is. Mad Timmy also really low in the backline there, but I think he's going to be all right. 
Oh, man, both these teams are trading back and forth here, but that was absolutely huge. That force wall did so much, catching out Johanna uh, and then being able to turn on to uh, Equinox there with that Void Prison. Great job coming up from here to finally be able to get some value on that Zero tool in this game. He's done a great job these last few fights walking in there. He's going to go ahead and po he gets polymorphed on that back line. Now the mosh pit comes out. Can they take him down? He does go down. So a nice power slide follow up there from the rest of the team. And now it's a 4v4. Boss Bloss in that top. And down comes the flame strike. It's not going to be able to take down Mystically. The force wall goes out, trapping Johanna in. And now the power slide. Zeus going to go down with that seven sided strike. Not able to keep them alive and force them off. And they are taking all kinds of damage here as Trader goes down. Mad Timmy being chased. Jaina goes down that back line. Another power slide. And Mad Timmy is going to go down. Oh, no. The Polymorph. He's just going to delay the inevitable. I LMAO. He's not going to go down. Fury. Can they get it? He is going down. A one for five trade there in favor of Gale Force Esports. Basically saying, hey, you took one of ours down. We're taking your whole team down. And yeah, Paul. Completely Ballin. annihilated them. Oh, absolutely. That was huge. Ball and Beast went full man mode and said, you know what? I'm going to die for this. I'm going to walk into uh, this Phoenix, but and I'm going to get killed for it. But in the end, it screwed them two kills on the back of it. So that was absolutely huge. A great play coming out from them. So, wow. Gale Force Esports looking commanding in that fight. And I know we've mentioned Fury a few times, but him and Equinox, you can tell they've been playing together. Their synergy is looking absolutely fantastic. Knowing that he could blow Mosh Pit just on that one hero, that the, all the big interrupts were down, the Bless Shield was down, and knowing that they were able to blow it on just that Zera tool and secure that kill, that was the turning point in that fight for them. And now they've got yet another Punisher. And the later it gets in the game, the more damage it's going to do. Hopping over there, that's what they want. They want to try and pull it away here. This late at level 20, though, these front gates and towers are going to go down very quickly. The Punisher's still with 50% health, but there we see the power of uh, the Flame Strike coming out twice there, and that's basically a zone out tactic with Phoenix now coming down. Yoda, and out comes the Mighty Gust. Can Fury survive trying to get the Power Slide in there? But Void Prison here on the back end going to neutralize quite a few. Can they capitalize on it? It doesn't look like so, but they salvage the keep. But what else will happen here? Because the Gale Force coming back in, possibly. Yeah, and the seven-sided strike there was completely whiffed. A little bit of miscommunication. Fury able to get out of it as they gusted back the rest of his team. And that was kind of a big deal there because I feel like that's sort of their their idea is to gust back four people and then execute that one person with a seven-sided strike uh, and go for that combo. So Yoda, he's trying his best here, but I feel like they've got enough poke at this point that they're going to be able to just take down this keep. Trader is throwing out these uh, Fury of the Sun while these empowered uh, flame strikes, but not really able to connect. Uh, I'm not sure how much I like the build going in this situation. I feel like Arcane Barrier would have done a lot for him in these fights, but uh, we'll see what they're going to do with it. I, I know they're trying to combine uh, with that Void Prison, but so far not getting a whole lot of value with that. They are staggering this out. They want this keep. They know they have the poke potential with Mystocles there, as well as Tassinar going in. Can they land the strike that takes it down? I'm surprised that they've held in here this long, but that shows you how valuable the keep is. And out comes the Mighty Gust. Ice Block this time does save them, but the damage is coming out. In comes uh, the Yoda. He's getting in on that back line. Ring of Frost does get two this time. And now the Mosh Pit coming down. Can they follow it up? Down goes Kerosene. Boss Floss in all kinds of trouble. Boss Floss does have that indestructible. He's going to survive. Zeus trying to get out of there. But the nice bolt coming in from Mystocles, who drops back into the Flame Strike. Yoda taking all kinds of damage. Does go down. Fury trying to dive in. They're going to get this keep. They got four members for two. So a huge fight there for Gale Force. Wow, that was absolutely massive. A huge back and forth fight. Fury pulling out an absolutely amazing mosh pit. Uh, able to secure basically two kills for them now the flame strikes oh man. and the, the the chain bombs in that fight as well were absolutely uh huge hexo fell kind of early but having that second support almao was able to keep his team alive and that was i feel like the big factor there in that fight was having that little bit extra sustain uh did fury actually end up going uh no he didn't end up going for groupies i was wondering if they had that extra healing but uh, still, Elmeo, I feel like, was, was kind of the under, unsung hero there. And the little plays, the fact that when that gust came out, Elmeo put a wall down in front of his team to stop them from getting pushed into the opponents. It's the little moves like that that just really show some higher level of play here. And it's going to pay off from here. Is they're going to get, uh, I think, the sixth or fifth punisher of the game for them. So that's that's a big deal. 
It is a huge deal. Again, the later in the game this goes, the stronger it is. Obviously, the towers and the gate are still up, but there is no middle keep. And a lot of times we see these pro players as Mystically has got disconnected. We might have a pause here. Uh, if needed. Uh, nothing coming out just yet. But a lot of times you'll see these pro players, they'll take the Punisher, and the Punisher prioritizes heroes before it prioritizes structures. So a lot of times they'll try and pull it away, maybe pull it to another structure before it goes to the core. The problem is the middle keep is down, so if the bottom keep goes down, it's going directly for that core, and 22 minutes into the game, it's super powerful. Yeah, you know, a lot of, as you said, that tactic to pull it into that center keep, it's not going to work here, so... I'm not sure. There's, I think there's a few too many structures here. I feel like uh, at this point, with five members up and all their ultimates, I, I think Hot Dog Burglars will be able to defend this. But uh, if, if, if someone gets caught out here with a big... Uh, Mosh Pit's down for 20, though. So if someone gets caught out here, uh, the defense, I think, will be okay. But this is going to be a pretty tough call from them. And Gus is going to come out instantaneously. They're just going to shred this Punisher. They don't want to have anything to do with this. Uh, it's going in. The push is coming. There's comes the big aggressive stray. Fury's coming in, though, on the back of this. They're just going to back up, though. Not really getting much value. Aelmeo taking a little bit of damage in the back line, though. Trader, he's trying to pull this uh, Punisher back. And Zoo's also very low. It's arcane, though. It's still pretty darn destructive, despite the nerfs. So, uh, is it? I don't think it's going to secure this keep. No, no. They've done a good enough job of taking it down. So, the keep is going to live. That was an absolutely amazing job. Another great defense here. We've seen some great stands in these last few games. Again, a lot of really good players in tonight's game as we are seeing a possible party bush here right next to the uh, camp here. This could be huge. Yeah, absolutely. But, oh, it's instantly scouted. Fury's coming in, though, and going to get caught in the VP. Yoda, is he going to go down? Yes, and the Ring of Frost on the back of that. So Zeratul going to get deleted to start this fight. Bless Shield's coming in, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And the Storm Shield's coming out. Oh, but that was absolutely huge. Not quite inside of that VP and actually ended up going down there. That was a really big deal. Yeah, you know, Yoda went in. It looked like he knew what was going on, but the force wall came out and trapped him in. And having to send one member ba back, Vala is going to go back, try and clear up the camp that is pushing their top keep. They want to make sure that this doesn't do too much, but they are going to have four members potentially rotating up here to try and take down this keep. And I don't know if they're in position to get it. It is a 4v4 with Vala back. They have to be very careful here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like this uh, really aggressive posturing at this point. They don't have a ton of outright damage. They don't, only with Mysticles. So I don't think they're actually going to have the damage to take down this keep. They're sort of just keeping the other team trapped inside their base. Hot Dog Burglars, though, is going to have Zeratul back up in 10. So this could maybe be an overextension. Val's coming in from the mid lane, though. So, man, these flame strikes making you think. Uh, definitely trying to get back out here. But the shields from Tassar, they have quite a bit of sustain here. Boss loss is going in, though. And there goes the Bless Shield. Jaina taking a lot of damage. Storm Shield coming out as well. Polymorph from the back line. There goes the big Phoenix and the seven sided strike going down as well. Yoda's going in now, though, and the strafe as well. Trying to peel back for their team. Hexo taking in. But here comes the fly. Zeus is gushing them back in. The uh, gravity laps actually not connect. Aelmeo not going to go down, though. And the Ring of Frost only going to get yes on one. Monk is going to go down. That's huge. Mysticles, though, is he going to survive? And no, he's going to drop. There comes the Mosh Pit in the back line, though. Kael'thas Zeus, oh, is going to go down from that. And two kills, though. So it's actually turning that around is Gale Force Esports. That was absolutely massive. Huge potential there. The kills are back and forth. Once again, that extra flame strike, paying dividends, taking down Jaina the minute that Karazim went down, and they are staying in position. Down goes another keep. They're going to try and get back. I, LMAO, he's going to be able to shift here in a minute, and there he goes as Yoda is going to go ahead and to drop back. But a win there for Gale Force as they get yet another keep and win another fight. Not enough members are staying alive, though, for them to end the game. We are now at 25 minutes here, Edinburgh. Oh man, this game, these teams are so evenly matched. I haven't seen a game this even in a while. This is absolutely, oh, I, I'm blown away. This game has been fantastic so far. Gale, Gale Force Esports debuting their new roster in uh, in a pretty massive fashion here. Uh, and Hot Dog Burglars is putting up uh, an insane fight. This has been a war. And both these, of, oh, oh, go sorry. ahead, no, Yoda's coming think in. about the amount of Punishers that they've had to face. Oh, I, I think it's six now? Seven? Six Punishers, I think? It, they, they've done a great job. They, they just really need to completely win a team fight. This late in the game, if they win it, you know, it's going to be over. But again, the amount of vision coming out to neutralize Zeratul has been the biggest thing, I think, of this game. And there it is, once again, Oracle coming out saying, hey, we see you trying to flank. Stop it. Yeah, picking Zeratul in that second slot, I think, is kind of coming back to haunt them a bit here. But here we go. 
Flame Strikes coming down Yoda, though, taking quite a lot of damage. Mysticles is sensing that boss loss is playing so ham, but here we go. Zeus with the aggressive fly once again. Not getting too much value, though. And Fury's going to walk out of that 7 sided strike. Zeus actually taking a lot of damage and getting blinked on. Mysticles is going aggressive here. Fury, though, also forcing them out in the back line. They're chasing. Yoda, they know boss loss is a little caught out here. Does he have indestructible? Yes, he does. So he's going to survive a little bit longer. Alamio getting very low as well. Yoda's coming in. He's going to look to execute him, but he's still got that prescience up. So he does boss loss go down here. No, the shields are enough coming out from Karazim. So, wow, Zeus went in for that fly. He knew he had to make the aggressive play, but he ended up paying for it with his life. Mysticles, that blink was absolutely huge. Great play coming out from him. I think this is probably going to be GG. 27 minutes in, no keeps standing in their way, a 5-4 to four advantage, and a full-strength Punisher going to be hitting the court. They've defended well thus far. Can they do it one more time? That is the question. They're now pulling the Punisher away, and this is what we're talking about with the Mosh Pit coming in there, taking down Yoda, and that is pretty much going to secure as that keep is going to go down. Boss Floss in here, trying to sustain no indestructible this time. Johanna goes down, seven-sided strike, being dispersed evenly amongst all those members. Mad Timmy about to go down, and that is going to be GG in favor. Gale Force Esports coming in and taking down the Hot Dog Burglars. 27 minute game, 24 to 23. That was a fantastic game of Heroes of the Storm. Showing some great decision making from both teams, some fantastic heads up plays, some pure skill plays. Some of the, the timings on these ice blocks, the timing on some of these force walls, just showing uh, an absolutely fantastic level of play here coming out from both these teams. I'm super impressed. Gale Force Esports looking like they've been, you know, this roster's been together less than a week, but it's looking like they've been playing together for for months, if not years. Uh, the coordination there was absolutely fantastic. Alamio on that on the Tassadar, the Force Walls to block his own team in to stop the Mighty Gusts pushing them into the opposing. That those plays are, are what make me happy as a support main. I, I don't think we're going to be seeing Zeratul pick quite as early anymore. Uh, yeah, I, I would I would think not. Uh, and if, I, if you are, then you make sure and ban... I mean, the fact that they went Brightwing Tassadar and they both specced into Vision at level 4, I was really surprised by that, but it absolutely neutralized anything Zeratul was trying to do there. Oh, absolutely. No, you could tell Yoda was trying to go in. He was always he was always on that flank. He was always down. He was always away from his team. He was always looking for those engages, but between the peekaboo, between the, the Oracle talent, it was never happening. They, you're right. It was it was a great pick. They instantly picked the Tassadar. There was instant response. They said, we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to deal with Yoda on this hero. And definitely they respected his play, and it, it paid off for them in spades. Definitely. Uh, it was. Those are the kind of games. And uh, when the minute that game came up, we were both like, oh, this is going to be a good game. I think we got more than we probably wanted because that was uh, one heck of a game, but that's going to be Gale Force Esports moving on to the finals to be facing off against Afro Doge, who, again, is one of those teams that's been put together in the wake of the qualifiers. A lot of teams kind of split up or dropped or a few members left. And uh, we're seeing the effects of it here in the Divergent Gaming Open, and, uh, man, we are getting a treat because of it. Oh, yeah, no. I, I knew going into it, I was looking at the teams who were registering, and I went, ooh, Ooh, we're seeing a lot of good teams coming out. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Afro Doge, How Win, Tiger JK, June, Crone, and Dai Hu. So a lot of names who've been in the scene for a, a very long time. Uh, and they've kind of come together. People who sort of not had, you know, they've sort of been on those big teams and not had a lot of success per se. And they've now come together uh, and making something happen. And they're in the finals. So I guess they're doing something right. And they didn't have the easiest road to get there. Uh, they ended up going through uh, Excelsior, uh, Heroes of the Dorm team, which came out, and then THC. THC is a team that we've been seeing coming in in the M scene for uh, quite a bit now. Uh, this is THC Black. Impressed the crap out of me multiple times, so that could not have been an easy game. But here they are in the finals. It's going to be Afro Doge versus Gale Force Esports. I think all the stream issues have resolved, so I think we're going to keep it here for now. Uh, hopefully... Uh, confirm with me in chat, uh, and if if things are are not looking, uh, if things are not looking 100, then we'll we'll switch it over uh, for J Hell for the finals. So let us know in chat. We're gonna go on a short break, and we're gonna be coming to you with the finals of the Divergent Gaming Open. My name is Invram, joined by J Hell. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you soon.